Welcome to Sports Center. Hope you enjoyed the hockey game. Natasha and Mark with you. And Mark, I think this one played out pretty much how we thought it would. Uh, Canada had a perfect record against the Swiss coming into this one, and they exerted their dominance yet again. Yeah, safe to say history was on Canada's side. The one maybe worry was looking ahead to that New Year's Eve game against Finland, but you're right, it was total domination. The Canadians all-time head-to-head against the Swiss, 23-0. and The Swiss have just one point in those games. It was a shootout loss back in 2006. And under two minutes in, good forecheck here by Quinton Byfield. Helps force the turnover, then finds Philip Tomasino sneaking off the bench. And he is having a great tournament. Fourth goal in under 20 minutes of ice time in the tournament. This shift, an efficient seven seconds. Canada leading 1-0 after 20 minutes. Second period. Canada now in the power play. 0 for 3 in the game to this point. Dylan Cousins. Great tip, jams at home. His team leading eight point of the tournament. That puts Canada ahead 2-0. Then some physicality from the Canadians later in the frame. Dylan Holloway, who missed last game with an upper body injury. Well, he's testing out that injury quite nicely here. He lays out Simon Knack. Then it's Dawson Mercer crunching Elvis Sherlapfer in the neutral zone. Mercer, one of six returning players from last year's gold medal team. And a few minutes later, Byfield at it again. Slick feed to, uh, to Connor Zari. And Jacob Peltier cleans up on the rebound. Byfield, three assists through two periods. Peltier makes it 3 nothing. Canada. It's now 4-0 and Canada out shooting this with 29-6 at this point. Noah Patno, Rob Zari tight. Patno, a member of the St. John Sea Dogs of the Q, facing 23 shots in the second period alone. Uh, no chance for him here though. Cousins forces the turnover, tees up. Connor McMichael. Cousins, his second point of the game. Canada outshot the Swiss by 30 through two periods. They led 5-0 after two. More from Byfield in the third. Parked in front of the power play and will deflect the Jamie Drysdale point shot. Byfield, the youngest player on Canada's roster for the second straight year. Now, he didn't score at all at last year's tournament. Gets his first here, Canada leading 6-0. Then under three minutes later, Canada forces the turnover and Jack Quinn finds Byfield wide open. He pots his second of the game. Six points for Byfield in this one as Canada. A double digit performance once again. In fact, it's just the third time in tournament history that Canada has scored at least 10 goals in multiple games in a single tournament. So they've never lost to Switzerland at the World Juniors, carrying a perfect 24 0 record. As for Dylan Cousins, that second period goal gives him a point in all three of Canada's games. He's now a point behind Trevor Zegers of Team USA for the tournament lead in points. With more on Canada's big victory over the Swiss, let's welcome in James Duffy. Thank you with Bob McKenzie and Craig Button. One year ago, Quinton Byfield was the youngest player on Team Canada, and it showed. He ended as the 13th forward, did not play a single shift in the gold medal game. This year, he's still the youngest player on Team Canada and no longer the forgotten man. In fact, an absolute force in this game. Is this the moment, Bob, where Canada goes, Oh, that's why he was picked second overall by the Kings. I suppose so. I mean, if this is the reinforcement that you need, that he was the second or best, the third best player in the draft, I guess, well, so be it. But I think most people probably understood that. But this just reinforces that. And you know what? And as much as it was the two goals and six points, and hey, let's be honest about that, what, what a towering performance that was. It was It was everything. It was the face-offs. It was the physical play. It was, you know, just being defensively aware of what was going on but to have that offensive outburst in the fashion that he did and to get a great power play goal in the third on the tip on Drysdale's shot to have some of the assists that he had uh, just a terrific performance by Quinton Byfield you know he's, he's been a guy that everybody's been talking about because he, he started off very slow in the camp um, you know, had some issues where he wasn't even on the ice at the beginning. He was a little bit held back for a day or two because of some of the travel regulations and protocols in place. And then once they started having red-white games, the word got out, well, he's off to a really slow start. And suddenly people were saying, oh, well, I don't know what's wrong with Byfield. And then this tournament starts, and suddenly people are looking at him and saying, well, I don't like the way he played the first two games. This game will silence all of that. It's just one game. But nevertheless, it was quite an impressive performance any way you slice it. 
Bob, I was in Red Deer when Quinton Byfield showed up. He was two days behind everybody. Keep this in mind. Since he played last March, he worked out in the offseason, put on 13, 14 pounds, and now you come back and you got to get accustomed to carrying that weight and moving with that weight. And then you start two days behind everybody else. Yeah, you're going to be a little bit sluggish. But does it impact his potential and his talent? No. You could see that over time he was getting quicker and more assertive and with it getting more opportunities well those opportunities he made good on against Switzerland and he was a dominant force he's looking more comfortable he's not foreseeing things he's always going to be a determined competitor but it seems it's all coming together right at the perfect time for Team Canada and Quinton Byfield. And he truly had been overshadowed by Tim Stutzla so far at this tournament, who's been so good for Germany and was picked one spot after Byfield, but uh, certainly not on this day. Two of Quinton's five points come on the power play, a power play that had struggled against Slovakia and early in this one. How did they fix it? Great. Well, they fixed it by being quicker with the puck, more aggressive at the net. In the first period, they were pedestrian. They were slow moving the puck, and when you're slow moving the puck, it may, you play right into the opponent's penalty killing because they get in the lanes and you don't put them under duress. And that's where Canada was clearly not having success in the first period. They get to the second period, and they were much, much better, much crisper, much quicker with everything they were doing. And that power play with all the skill, and we talked about it at the outset, James, the skill will give you the thrills. It's the will that gives you the power in the power play. And they went to work and were outstanding after that first period on the power play where it wasn't very good. And one of the developments we saw in the power play was that Jamie Drysdale did get on the second power play and was obviously a factor getting those shots through from the blue line. Uh, Thomas Harley came off the blue line. Drysdale was inserted. We'll see if it stays that way the rest of the way. But Drysdale certainly is a catalyst on that power play as well. It's tough for Team Canada in these games because fans tend to judge them on how they win. The first game against Germany, well, maybe they scored too many goals. And then against Slovakia, well, they didn't score enough goals. Maybe this one, finally, the most complete effort was just right and they improved to 3-0. All right, so with the win, Canada moves ahead of Finland atop the Group A standings with nine points. The Finns have two games remaining, beginning uh, with uh, a game on Wednesday against Slovakia. Now, if Finland defeats the Slovaks, that sets up a winner-take-all uh, matchup for top spot in Group A on New Year's Eve between Canada and Finland. And speaking of that game, we'll have it for you on New Year's Eve on Thursday. Coverage beginning at 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific across the TSN network. And we'll continue to get back to Edmonton and hear from Team Canada um, and more reaction following their win over Switzerland. The U.S. taking on Czech Republic, a nervous moment during warm-up as Spencer Knight gets taken out by teammate Drew Hellison. Look out. Fortunately, he'd be okay, and it did not prove to be a bad omen for the game. It was all USA led by Trevor Zegras, up 1-0 in the second. Zegras dancing in the offensive zone before dishing it off, and he gets rewarded with a one-timer into the open cage. The Ducks' ninth overall pick in 2019 with his fourth of the tournament, and he was just getting started. Third period, Zegris once again patiently waiting all alone back door, and again it pays off. This time, blasted upstairs, Zegris' tournament leading fifth goal, catching the eye of 2016 World Junior standout Austin Matthews, who was tweeting his praise, which made its way all the way back to Zegris. I mean, that's pretty cool, obviously. I know a bunch of guys in our, in our locker room look up to him and obviously what he's done for USA Hockey. Um, so, I mean, that's definitely pretty cool. It's something probably I'll remember for a while. Zegers proving he can do more than just score midway through the frame. He springs Hab first round pick. Cole Caulfield who goes five hole for his first of the tournament. Just a minute later, now up a man. It's Caulfield to Zegris to Matthew Boldy down low. And he goes between the legs to make it 7-0 for the Americans. Zegris finished with five points in the game. The U.S. wins big, 7-0, your final. Now here's an updated look at the Group B standings. The U.S. has now won seven straight against the Czechs at the World Junior Championship. The states are now level on points with Sweden, although the Swedes have only played two games. They take on Russia tomorrow night. All right, let's get more reaction from Team Canada. Here's Jacob Peltier with Ryan Rashog. 
Well, another big offensive explosion from your team tonight, Jacob. But what did you guys like overall about your game outside of the offense that you brought? I mean, I think uh, we played the full uh, full game, and uh, you know, uh, I, I mean, uh, the I think the the D zone was was good too. So uh, I think uh, you know um, we're pretty happy about it. You're part of a line with Quinn and Byfield that is really starting to produce and seeming to find some chemistry. Uh, likely you'll stay together. Does that help that maybe you get a chance to play a few games with the same guys? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think uh, we had some some uh, good bounce tonight. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think we played some, some uh, pretty good games uh, uh, overall and uh, yeah. Do you feel like this team is getting ready for its biggest challenge, which will come in your final game. It's been a couple of blowouts. Do you think you're where you need to be for the toughest test so far? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we can see uh, some, some progress and uh, we are happy about that. On a personal note, you missed the camp last year due to injury. What does it mean to you to be here, be competing, be contributing? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, just to, to represent my, my country, uh, it's huge and uh, I'm, uh, I'm proud of that for sure. Thanks, Jake. Thank you. Some big news out of the NHL today with the Chicago Blackhawks announcing Jonathan Taves is out indefinitely with a medical issue and won't report to training camp. The news about their captain comes just days after Kirby Dock was ruled out for at least four months after fracturing his wrist at the World Junior Hockey Championship. The 32-year-old Taves has been the Hawks captain since 2008. He had 18 goals and 60 points for Chicago last season and led them to an upset over Connor McDavid and the Oilers in the NHL play-in round. Taves issued this statement today. This offseason, I've been experiencing symptoms that have left me feeling drained and lethargic. I'm working with doctors so I can better understand my condition. Until I can get back, until I can get my health back to a place where I feel I can perform at an elite level and help the team, I will not be joining the Blackhawks for training camp. I do not have a timetable for when I will rejoin the team. I'm extremely disappointed, but it wouldn't be fair to myself or my teammates to attempt to play in my current condition. I will not be making any further comment at this time and ask everyone to please respect my privacy as I focus on my health and recovery. With more, let's go to Gino Retta. So what does today's news mean moving forward? Here's TSN analyst Dave Poole. And Dave, first and foremost, we're all pulling for Jonathan Taves to make a full and speedy recovery. It's been a rough couple of days for some key players in the Hawks organization, Dave. It really has, Gino. When the news first came out of Edmonton that young star Kirby Dock would miss four to five months with that wrist injury, that's a big blow to an organization. But that's a young budding star with a very bright, you know, upside. When you lose your captain, your captain of so many years, your captain of three Stanley Cups, the guy in the locker room, captain serious as it was, that magnitude is totally, totally different, Gino. He's a guy you want in that locker room, wherever state your team is in. Whatever state of growth, whatever state of rebuild, anything that happens, you want him there. You want others to learn from him. And he's been a captain and a leader for that team. The first time I saw him, Gino, he was 16 years old at Shattuck St. Mary's. It was 8 o'clock on a Sunday morning. I walked in the rink, and I knew who he was when he stepped on the ice. That's the kind of impact that some players have, and that's the kind that Jonathan Tavis had in Chicago for a long, long time. They're going to miss him while he's gone. Uh, back in late October, the Hawks confirmed they were officially in a rebuild. Given the latest news, how does that affect their plans now moving forward? Even more so, if it wasn't, you know, full full on the gas for the rebuild, it certainly is now, Gino. And, you know, Kane and Taves had great years. Two years ago, they had their top point years, and Taves had his top goal years. So it's not like players that are past their prime. But Stan Bowman now will look at the only three players that remain from that Stanley Cup team with Taves out are Duncan Keith, Patrick Kane, and the coming back from injury, Brent Seabrook. So... I think it's time for him to look at those guys and say, okay, here we are, guys. You're going to be a part of this, or we're going to make decisions that are going to be really tough for everybody. You know, Patrick Kane's still one of the elite players in the National Hockey League, as is Duncan Keith on defense. They'll have some really tough decisions with this Jonathan Taves news moving forward. Yeah, a couple of months ago, Stan Bowman said, we do not have enough players to compete with the top teams. If that was the case then, imagine how they're feeling right now. With six points tonight, here's Canada's Quinton Byfield. 
We've been talking to your coach about you for a couple of weeks now, and he keeps saying that you're doing the little things right. The details are there in your game. But does anything help more than a six-point night to kind of blow things open confidence-wise? Yeah, no, it definitely helps quite a bit. Um, you know, I haven't scored a World Juniors goal, so, um, you know, that's definitely uh, in the back of my mind. Um, you know, just getting the relief, finally scoring off that play. Um, you know, definitely released some pressure, but um, you know, I, st I still just played the same way and um, just got the bounce today and everything was just going my way. Still the youngest player on the team this year, but you played last year as well. You finished the tournament with one assist. You just talked about your first goal. Yeah. Did it feel the way you thought you would? Were you even maybe a little more excited than you thought you'd be to get one? Yeah, um, you know, I think any uh, goal is a goal, really. But, um, you know, I was finally getting a World Juniors goal. And, um, you know, going through last year's term without a goal definitely, um, you know, hurt a little bit. And, um, you know, you wanted to contribute as most as you can. Um, you know, finally getting that definitely, um, you know, feels like I'm contributing. Um, you know, I'm a bigger part of the team. So, um, you know, I think it was a big relief. Used to playing so many minutes in the Ontario Hockey League. Uh, as your game is coming along and you're earning trust with the coach, you're getting more ice time. It must just feel like you're sliding more into what feels normal. Yeah, no, it definitely feels good. I think, um, you know, all the guys, um, you know, they play big men from their from their club teams, respectfully, and, um, you know, we're all great players. So, uh, you know, it's definitely hard to juggle all the ice time with all this, um, you know, talent on the team. But, um, you know, wherever you get, uh, whatever role you are, you just want to make the most of it. And, um, you know, that's what I'm trying to do here. There have been a lot of big goal spreads in your game so far. You've got a tough, tough test coming up. Finland's going to be your toughest test. Do you think you guys have been able to prepare even though you've been in these blowouts? Yeah, I think so. I think we're still, um, you know, no matter what the story is, um, you know, we're still giving it our all and, um, you know, sticking to the system and, um, you know, just trying to play the right way, just, uh, you know, final pucks and then, um, you know, just working on our systems continuously. So uh, I think that's really going to translate to, um, you know, playing uh, Finland and, um, you know, they're really good. So I, I think it's really going to help us. Congrats on a six point night. All right, thank you. Coming up on Sports Center, history on the line tonight for the Raps in Philly as they look to avoid the franchise's worst start to a season in 15 years. Plus, after a sideline phone paid the price for the Patriots' loss to Buffalo, we're counting down the top 10 phone moments in the SC Top 10. Oh, Canada defeats Switzerland 10 0. New on SC, here's Jack Quinn. Well, yet again, you get to hit the dressing room and play the victory song. Uh, how does it feel to, to be where you're at in this tournament and the team playing the way it is? Yeah, I think we played well today. Uh, it was nice to get that win. I think we're all proud of the way we played today. So um, the tournament's been good so far. I think we've gotten better each game, and, and that's uh, what we're trying to do every day. Another big spread in this game. You know Andre well. You, know, you play for him, his demand for details. How much is he on you? in these games where there's this big goal spread to, to pay attention to these details? A lot. Um, I think that's his, his main focus, um, which, which makes sense because obviously, like I said, we want to get better every day and uh, that's, I think, the best way to, to do so in, in high scoring games. So I think that's what we're focusing on uh, in between periods and, and in the game uh, when the score gets high. You've had a bunch of games together as a group now. How would you describe the dressing room? Uh, really close, close, close group. Uh, we're starting to you know, get along really well, and I guess it's showing on the ice. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan. Team Canada playing its third game of the tournament, taking on Switzerland. There's a quick shot, score! his second goal of the tournament. Now a steal by Cousins. Drops it back. And a chance for Michael scores! That's six points for Byfield. No surprises through the first three games of the tournament. Canada improves to 24-0 all-time against Switzerland. And with more on their 10-0 victory, here's James Duffy. Thank you. Back with Bob McKenzie and Craig Button. Though they were 2-0 in the tournament and ahead in the hockey game, I think all of Canada was still waiting to see Canada flex its collective 19 first-round draft pick muscle. Did that finally happen, Craig, midway through the second? It absolutely did, James. And if anybody tuned into the pre-game show, Bob McKenzie laid out the blueprint. Pucks to the net, hunt the puck, be aggressive in and around the net, and get those loose pucks, play hard, heavy hockey. Well, that's exactly what Canada did, and that shift in the second period, two minutes and 13 seconds worth were full marks for everything that you hear about the way Canada wants to play. They executed it to a T, and they were relentless 
on the Swiss and ended up drawing a penalty that led to a goal. But Bob, you had the blueprint and the Team Canada players executed it perfectly. Well, Connor Zari, Jacob Pelche, Quinton Byfield, they were amongst the players that really set the tone in terms of that shift and for much of the game as well. And it showed up on the scoreboard. But Andre Tourney wanted a much more straight, hard, hard straight line game. And with certain times of the game, they started doing that. And when they did, they totally dominated. And that shift spoke volumes about it. I mean, we're those, still, we're those, still looking at it. Those Swiss defenders, two <laughs> minutes and 13 seconds of Canada just coming at them over and over. And everyone will say, well, it's a 10 nothing game against Switzerland. But these are important games to establish things like that and also to get guys who need to score goals because they are goal scorers back for their regular teams to score for Canada and get that confidence. Fair, Bob? Uh, absolutely. And so you look for trends or breaking of trends. And certainly the one trend we've seen so far is that Phil Tomasino has done a great job of providing consistent offense, and he did that very early into the hockey game. 90 seconds in, he sets the tone. Byfield does a good job, but it's... it's uh, Tomasino, who just snipes that one right up over Pat No shoulder. Now, it was this was the 8-0 goal for Cole Perfetti. Why is it important? Because it's Perfetti's first goal. Because he's an offensive player. And offensive players who haven't scored a goal, they feel like they've got a little weight of the world on their shoulders. So for him to get that goal will alleviate some of those concerns. And when you look at the lineup as a whole, every forward is a first-round draft pick. And we've talked about the offensive skill and prowess they have while it's shone through. Bob talks about Tomasino and Perfetti. Well, Jack Quinn, Andre Tordney's pupil with the Ottawa 67's three points. Peyton Krebs had a really big game. Every line had a goal in this game. The depth and the skill of Canada's forwards certainly was showing versus Switzerland. And when you have 29 goals in three games, you start to dominate the tournament scoring list right now. Now, Trevor Zegras has been great for the Americans, had a five-point game, but right behind him, three Canadians. Dylan Cousins is in second. Byfield, six points, gets him up to seven. And as Bob said, Phil Tomasino has been terrific throughout the entire tournament. It's simple now. Beat Finland New Year's Eve, and you win the group. This tournament report was brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Devin Levi earned a shout-out for Canada. We will hear from the goaltender coming up on SportsCenter. Here's Canada's goaltender, Devin Levi. Well, Devin, including pre-tournament play through three games and a couple of periods, uh, you know, you're, you're giving up less than a goal per game. Uh, can you, would you have imagined ahead of time that it would go this well? And, and how does it feel to be having the success that you're having? Yeah, I mean, it feels good. Uh, it feels good to be playing. That's that's just, I'm I'm super excited to be here, and I have a good team. They play well in front of me, so it's it's been a uh, it's been a team effort so far, um, and we we look forward to what's to come. A huge part of your preparation is mental focus. You go long stretches in some of these games without seeing any pucks. Is that where that mental focus pays off for, do you think? 100%. It's not easy to go 10 minutes without facing a shot. It's easy to get cold, but um, I'm able to, to, to move around and stay warm and also stay dialed in mentally. Your coach, John Goyens, put together a video, people wishing you good luck. He said to you, keep earning it every day, walk the dog and ice bath what does walk the dog and ice bath mean so uh it's it's a lions inside joke the team that that i played for when he was the coach was black st louis lions and he'd say before every game go walk the dog it, it just means get get your legs moving go get some fresh air and it's it's just basically preparation and um he's he's really the coach that that really made me realize how important preparation is before a game last one for you mark masters and i were chatting this morning and between the two of us we don't ever recall seeing you inside the rink with shoes on. Every <laughs> interview you do, every stretching session, it's socks only. What's up with that? I mean, uh, I like to keep the, the nice room clean. Don't want uh, nice. to put any footsteps on, on the room. It's an awesome room, but I mean, all, all I have to do is just stretch and cool down, and I don't need shoes for that. So, Good stuff, Devin. Whatever you're doing, it works. Thanks. Thanks.